Okay, guys, we're back. And today we're going to be talking about Vesper. What exactly is valence shell electron pair repulsion or Vesper? We are not going to be talking about bond hybridization in this video. It's going to be in the next one. I wanted to split these two up. So let's do that. Uh, Vesper in general is going to be talking a lot about molecular geometry electron geometry bond angles what do these molecules actually look like so the first thing that you need to know about valent shell electron pair repulsion is that electrons repel each other this kind of makes sense because you have two negative charges and just like two negative ends of a magnet they're going to repel each other so remember chemists are not clever namers we have electrons and electrons and they repel each other and what do we call this phenomenon? Electron-electron repulsion. It usually is, if two things are interacting, you say one thing, the other thing, and then how they're interacting. So electron-electron repulsion. Uh, there's also dipole-dipole interactions uh, or dipole ionic interactions. Uh, it's always kind of one thing, one thing, how are they reacting? Uh, so for electron-electron repulsions, remember that that electrons are trying to push each other apart as far as possible. They're trying to repel each other. And we can use that to kind of see the shape of molecules. Whenever we're doing Lewis structures, we're drawing them on pieces of paper. They're 2D structures because they're in two dimensions. We're writing it on paper. It has up, down, left, right, but it doesn't have forward and backward. In reality, we live in a 3D world where you have up, down, left, right, and forward and backward. This can be a little different. In a 2D world, this is how far apart these electrons can push each other. These electrons that make up the bond are going to be pushing these guys, which are going to be pushing these guys, which are pushing these guys. They all try to spread out as much as possible. In a 2D world, this is as far as they can go from each other. They're all 90 degrees apart from each other, and that's fine. But again, we don't live in the 2D world, 3D world. So this is the how we can do if if we include a th third dimension the forward forward and backward dimension then we can uh, spread out these electrons in the bonds even more a and you get something that kind of looks like this molecule here so what i'm going to do now is just kind of go through and talk about the different types of structures that can be made the different types of geometries that can be made uh, because of this electron electron repulsion so if you take something like beryllium dichloride here and you draw its Lewis structure, you're going to get something that looks like this. The electrons in these bonds are going to try to push each other apart as far as possible. And since there's only two of them, they're going to end up on opposite sides of this uh, central atom. Now, in relation to the central atom, what we see is kind of a nice linear structure so we get this linear structure which is exactly what we name it we uh the name of this particular geometry is linear so if you have two bonds or two groups of electrons you're going to have a linear geometry going on so if we take something like boron trifluoride boron trifluoride is again always going to be around then you get something that looks like this you have the boron in the center and then three fluorines all around it and uh, they these three groups of electrons these three bonds are going to push each other apart as much as possible and so you get this trigonal planar uh, pattern now the thing is is that this is flat this is if if you were to if you looked at it head on it would be flat so this is why we say that this is planar, because it exists all on one plane. Uh, it, it really is kind of just a 2D shape, kind of a flat shape. Now, if you take something like methane, CH4, uh, if this was a 2D world, you would see it looks like this. And this, we would call this a square planar. But remember, we're not in 2D, we're in 3D, so it's gonna kind of look like this, which if I were to draw it out simply would look like this and we call this tetrahedral so a tetrahedral a tetrahedron is something with a, a geometric shape with four sides and this is the shape that you get the bond angles here 
our 109.5. 109.5 is going to be one of those numbers that you're just going to have to remember in your head. So 109.5 is your uh, bond angle for these guys. That's how far apart they are. Now, you may have heard me say before that I said electron groups, not necessarily bonds. That's because lone pairs are still electrons. When you have lone pairs existing here, then they're still going to be there and they're still going to re be repelling things. But remember, electrons don't really have significant mass. So we don't actually kind of see them. They exist there. They interact with things. They push things apart. They still repel. But they're not, there's nothing really there. There's nothing significantly there. So even though the electrons say that this should be a tetrahedral, there's no significant mass up here. So if you just look at the atoms themselves, we see that this kind of makes a really short pyramid. We call this trigonal pyramidal. So this trigonal pyramidal is the molecular structure, even though that if we look at the electrons, the electron geometry of this is going to be tetrahedral. So there's going to have to be we're going to have to distinguish between something that is the electron geometry, where we look at all the electron groups, and the molecular geometry, where we just look at the electron groups that make up bonds when we ignore the lone pairs. So there's that. Okay. So I'm just going to go through. This is something that I suggest you guys look up. There are plenty of these charts online. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of these right now, but if you just look up Vesper, you'll find plenty of these char charts with good examples. Um, in the link down there, I'm going to put a link to a FET simulation. It is uh, where you can see these different structures and different uh, geometries in play. Um, check it out. It It's fun just to kind of move the molecules around. So remember, if you have two electron pairs, it's going to be linear. If you see three electron groups, it's going to be trigonal planar. If you have four electron groups, it's going to be tetrahedral. If you have five, it's going to be something called trigonal bipyramidal. This is where you have this trigonal planar uh, geometry. And then additionally, two groups of electrons, one above, one below. So it looks like a short pyramid and a short pyramid on here. So if you have six electrons, then you get a, a geometry like this, where it is octahedral. Everything is 90 degrees from each other. There is kind of a square planar geometry and then one above, one below. So those are all going to be electron geometries. But what if we have lone pairs and we have to ignore one of these guys to get uh, to get your molecular geometry? So if we have to do that, then we can kind of look at these little charts. This is how we would talk about it. We already talked about trigonal pyramidal down here. But if we have something like water, where we have two lone pairs, then we have to ignore both of those, and the molecular structure looks like this. Uh, we call this bent. I usually say bent, although in the this textbook they refer, refer to it as V-shaped. If you look at your trigonal bipyramidal electron geometries, start putting in lone pairs, then you see if all the electrons are bonds, then you have trigonal bipyramidal. If it, one of them is, it looks like a seesaw. This is kind of a, these two are kind of like the legs, whereas these guys are one end of the, the teeter-totter, the seesaw. Here we call this T-shaped because these two are your lone pairs. We kind of ignore them, so it looks like a little T. And then we have linear. Yeah, linear. This is coming back. So even though we have a trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry, these three to be... Um, ignored when you look at the molecular geometry. And when that happens, these guys are 180 degrees apart, just like a linear molecular geometry. So I've been talking about bond angles quite a bit. And if you look at the bond angles for these uh, tetrahedral electron geometry guys, methane, ammonia, and water, you see something a little weird, that the bond angle for methane is 109.5. The bond angle for 
ammonia is 107, and the bond angle for water is 104.5. A good scientist looks for patterns, and we can see that as we're adding lone pairs, this guy has zero lone pairs, this guy has one, this guy has two, then our bond angle is going down. So if I wanted to make this a graph, I would say like number of lone pairs and we'd say bond angle. And we would say as our lone pairs go up, the bond angle goes down. So what does that kind of tell us? It tells us that for some reason, it tells us that the lone pairs electrons are somehow pushing more down on the rest of these guys. Now that there's two on water, these guys are pushing down even more. So why is that? You could say that one of two things. Either they're taking up more space or they're uh, exerting more force. And in this case, they're actually taking up more space. Uh, whenever you're going back and forth, they're kind of stretched a little thin. The orbital here is stretched thinner than if you had uh, lone pairs uh, just spending time with one nucleus. So this bond, the orbital, um, the space where the electrons can exist in a bond is kind of thinner than if you have the space the electrons can uh, exist in whenever it's just a lone pair. So because of this, they're taking up a little bit more room. They're uh, Since they're taking up more room, they are repelling things down a little bit further. So let's think about something um, that I haven't gone over yet, and that's multiple bonds. How does this work whenever you have multiple bonds or even something like resonant structures happening whenever you're talking about Vesper. For example, this nitrate molecule here. Uh, as a general rule, multiple bonds work as one effective pair of electrons. You don't worry about those, um, you don't worry about those double bonds whenever you're uh, thinking about how many electron groups you have. So even though this guy has a double bond here, we're going to go through and say that all of these electrons are going to be considered one group. So in this case, we have one, two, three, three groups. If you remember, this is going to be trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. All right, and those are the basic rules for Vesper. This is pretty quick, but I wanted, really wanted to split up this video from bond hybridization because bond hybridization can get a little uh, hairy. So uh, get ready for that, gear up for it. I'm, I'm, hopefully we'll be posting that video uh, later today. All right, see you guys later.